Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another epi of League Unlock. And yes, again, we are going Han Solo on this epi for a little bit of off-season news. The, L the LCS and the LEC sometimes takes a long time for things to get rolling before rosters and off-season business is figured out. The LCK wastes absolutely no time. We are not even a week removed from the World Championship, we saw lots of rumors immediately after T1 captured that title. And, and a few days later, we've got confirmations from the teams themselves for some of these rumors. And of course, first and foremost, tweeting individually players returning T1. Somehow, some way, the boys are buying in, they're running it back. The same starting five and the cherry on top, Coach Tom, the draft mastermind, all returning for 2024. I don't know how Jar Joe Marsh and crew pulled off this magic. Obviously, I can't see a world in this new LCK salary era where some of these guys aren't taking big pay cuts. I think Zeus at the forefront of that. We now know there were multiple LPL, LCK teams all throwing offers his way, probably higher than whatever he settled on to be on T1. But the camaraderie, the synergy with this squad, it's back. All five here and they are going to be the favorites in the LCK and worldwide because they're the defending world champions. And I believe I was trying to you know, scratch the back of the head memory-wise, this is the first time, not just the LCK, in any region where you have the exact same starting five heading into their third year together. I TSM 2016-2017 did it for two years. G2, the Dynasty, did it for two full years, but three years of the same starting five. And honestly, how would you upgrade you just won Worlds. I know before Worlds, people were saying can't wait for Owner to be out and see where they get an upgrade. But he smurfed the whole series, the whole playoff bracket in the World Championship. So I'm sure the organization looked around and said, how the hell are we going to get an upgrade over what we just got? And as I said, the players have bought in. They're on the best organization in the world. And now they're going to be entering this faker contract situation which gets complicated but it's something to do if you have won whatever it is three lck titles or been on the same team for three years then only 50 percent of your salary is going across the salary cap which is absolutely nutty obviously that's already happening for faker and you might be saying well is the is the drive the motivation the chip on the shoulder gone because these guys just won worlds obviously we're gonna have to wait and see but they still haven't won an lck title in three splits since 2022 spring and I think after the success that they had at the world championship they still haven't won MSI I think these guys want to build the legacy and build the dynasty of T1 back to what it was at its peak and these five all returned it that's that's a pretty good chance a pretty good angle that you're going to be seeing that happening it looks like the LCK once again is going to be running through T1 now you're throwing in Coma in the mix uh who's Maybe easily going to be a scapegoat now is the one change that's coming in. But Tom coming is, I assume he's going to be there as that strategic pick band coach returning. And Coma maybe uh, above in the hierarchy overseeing all things League of Legends with T1. But my god, what a... You thought winning Worlds was the biggest W. But coming afterwards and re-signing all these guys is equally as big. Not only did they win Worlds... Now it's looking like T1 has won the offseason heading into 2024. And it looks like it's more of the same in who their main challenger is going to be. This roster less confirmed because Gen G hasn't said it themselves. But plenty of leaks and rumors pointing towards what the starting five for Gen G is going to look like. And it looks pretty damn good. We thought when all these free agency four out of the five starters were uh, entering that free agent world. That none of them would be returning, but Mark and I talked about it. Ah, it's too bad they're not bringing Chovy. Well, it sounds like Chovy is returning alongside Pays, who's going to be there. And then you throw in Lahens returning to the lineup, who was there uh, the year before, obviously. And then bringing in Keen 
and Canyon on the top side. Obviously, Canyon is the headliner here for most people. And I know we just spent two full years praising the veteran leadership, the shot calling that Peanut brings, the synergy he has as team captain with this squad. And 100%, they are going to miss that. But Canyon can be the best jungler on the planet. And seeing, I see, I saw a few people saying, oh, but Canyon's not going to work well with a passive lane focused mid laner like Chovy. He needs help from his laners to get attention and control the jungle. Well, an easy way to control the jungle is having the opposing mid laner stuck under his turret because Chovy's smashing his face in in that laning phase. So I'm not worried about that. I'm worried, not worried, I'm hesitant to see if Canyon can just immediately get back to that you know, best jungler in the world form. I think a fresh start on a new team is going to be prove dividends for him. And it's a pretty damn good looking team, by the way. Uh, Canyon playing with Keen. Keen has never played with a jungler close to the level of Canyon. And I know the closeout to Worlds and at times in the LCK, Keen wasn't living up to that that hype and that stature of being one of, if not the best top laner, aside from Zeus, in the LCK. But I'm excited to see what levels he can reach with Canyon alongside him. And then Peanut leaving the big question mark is who's going to be the shot caller? Who's going to lead this team? That's where Lahans enters. He's obviously one of the most vocal supports in the LCK. So hopefully that and the already built in synergy that he has with somebody like Chobi. I'm excited. For this Gen G roster, I know these are the three-time defending LCK champions, and for the disappointing end at Worlds that they had in the quarterfinals, they still had T1's number all year. Who knows if things played out differently if they matched up in that best of five knockout round at Worlds? Probably not. T1 was at another level. But very excited for this Gen G roster and Lahens and Pays. I mean, that as a combo should be very interesting we know lahens likes to have some spicy picks in the bot lane year two for pays this guy was so unbelievably fantastic as a rookie i'm not even i'm not sweating i'm not even thinking about a sophomore slump because this guy seems immune to all other things that rookies have gone through over the years so just excited to see the growth of this 17 becoming 18 year old phenom in that bot lane i think it almost doesn't matter what the rest uh, of these rosters end up being. You're immediately slotting Gen G in that two spot behind T1. Seen some rumors about Hanwha Life that Peanut is going to be heading over there alongside Zeka, Viper, and now Delight. That's that's your top three right there. It doesn't even matter who the top lane ends up being for Hanwha Life. If you've got Delight and Viper together, what an absolute treat. Peanut as a veteran leader on that squad. The built-in synergy of Peanut and Delight. That's a hell of a top three in the LCK. I know T1 um, saved Korea from the disaster LPL takeover, but that's a mighty fine looking top three and some solid off seasons for both Hanwha Life and Genji, kind of just consummating uh, together. But Canyon going to Genji is going to be the headline, aside from T1, uh, re-signing that entire starting five. I'm very excited to see uh, Chovy. Three straight years with Gen G if he does end up returning. That obviously, he's never been with the same team for two years, let alone three. So, very excited so far. There's still going to be a lot more dominoes to fall through for the LCK and the LPL. So far, the big exodus over to the LPL hasn't happened yet. Aiming's a big name that's been thrown around. I've seen people saying Deft might be going to KT. Maybe Aiming is going to D+. So still some very big players that we don't know where they're going to be ending up. This is still just scratching the surface of the absolute madness that's going to be going on over in the LCK this offseason. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric. As always, thank you to you wonderful people across the globe for watching as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.